Hi, it's Greg Hurrell again with another Vim screencast. So I just promised in the last one that I was going to talk about no normal mode mapping. So let's do that. Now, normal mode mappings are very important. In Vim, you should be spending as much time as possible in normal mode. Every time you do something in insert mode, you should be getting out of insert mode as soon as possible because normal mode is where all these high leverage fundamental operations are. Um, as such, these mappings are ones that you should consider very carefully. Uh, because the real estate in the normal mode layer is very valuable. So let's look at what I've got set up here. Some of these I've already touched on in other screencasts, but I'll just quickly run through the whole file. Uh, we've got tab mapped to toggle the fold at the current position. Uh, that is something that I talked about in a previous screencast, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail or demonstrate that one. Another one that I talked about in a previous screencast was using the enter key to run the last macro because most of the time you're not using the enter key. It's kind of useless. And repeating the last macro is a little bit painful. So you've got to hit, you know, at and a letter. This is just mashing the return key. Now one change that I made since implementing this uh, and showing it in the screencast is this. I've got to check there to make sure that this only applies if the current buffer is not a special buffer. Uh, so if we're talking about something like the quick fix window, we don't actually want this return mapping to be set up because the return key is actually really useful in the quick fix listing. It enables you to open the file that you've got currently selected under the cursor. So we don't want it to run there, but everywhere else we do. Um, another one that I previously talked about in the episode on Carabiner, I think, was how to use this low level piece of software to make the terminal see the difference between tab and command I, which is why I'm able to set tab to toggle folds in the first place. So I've actually got F6 being sent whenever I hit command I and Vim makes it behave like command I. There's a couple of others in here which are of this form. Uh, so here you see that I've got shift Q mapped to Q and down a little bit lower, you see that I've got shift K mapped to nothing at all. The reason is I almost only ever hit those keys by mistake. So I don't want to switch to X mode, so that's why I've got Q just mapped to Q. And I almost never want to press Shift K to get a list of documentation that I probably don't want to see or maybe don't even have. Uh, if we skip up 12 lines there, Shift Y is really a consistency mapping. This is another one that is pretty common to see in a lot of MRCs. We already have Shift D, which takes D, which is delete, and turns it into an operation that extends to the end of the line. Uh, shift C is kind of the same, change to the end of the line. So Y should really be the same, it should be yanked to the end of the line. And so we do that. These four here, uh, you can see are uh, just those directional movement keys that I already demonstrated when I was talking about visual mode, the ability to cheaply move between splits without having to cord that control W prefix. Uh, here's another one that I talked about in the episode on split navigation and the whole notion of vinegar. Minus will show me the directory that I'm currently in, in a directory explorer. Uh, moving down a little bit, we've got these ones. I uh, can't remember whether I've ever mentioned these. The cursor keys aren't typically very useful in Vim. A lot of people bind them to nothing at all. Uh, in my case, I figured I may as well put them to good use, and that is they enable me to nav navigate between entries in the quick fix listing. Uh, so up and down moves to the previous or next match, uh, left and right moves to the previous or next file. Um, and so I find that pretty useful. Um, and finally, these last ones here. Normally when you use relative num number jumps, they're not gonna wind up in the jump list. Uh, but what this does is whenever the jump is large enough, it actually does add them to the jump list by checking if the number that the jump will jump is five or greater, or greater than five. Um, in which case it does set the mark such that when you move back through the jump list, you will jump back to where you previously jumped. So the reason why this is useful is, for example, just say I'm at the top of the buffer here and I move down you know, one line. That's not a very useful jump to be able to go back through. Uh, so if I hit control O here, you see that it didn't go back to the top of the buffer. It went back to the previous place I'd been. On the other hand, if I do a bigger jump, like say 10, that is significant enough that I want control O to move me back to that jump. So if I hit control O now, I wind back where I was. Um, so this is another one of those ones which is effectively invisible. Uh, I could put this in your VMRC and you might not even notice. It's a non-invasive mapping and therefore uh, exactly the kind of mapping that you want to do 
on that normal mode layer, which is valuable. Um, so that's all the normal mode ones. I've got one more mode to look through, which is leader, and I'll come back to that in the next screencast.